My wonderful husband went and picked up me up a nucleus colony of bees, which I have right here. As you can tell, it is very dark out because we picked them up at 8 o'clock this evening. You either pick them up at 6 in the morning or 8 at night, and that's just because the bees are not out flying around, getting pollen and nectar. They're inside their hives, and, and then they're just closed up, and then we are able to bring them home. So so it is about 10.30 right now because we live in the middle of nowhere and it takes about two hours to get anywhere. So he went about two hours away to pick this up and was able to do a bit of grocery shopping um, while he was there. Yay for us! And then it took him about two hours to get back. So it's dark out but I'm placing the nucleus colony where I will be putting the hive in the long run. So I am going to be leaving it here for about a day or so and then I will place the five frames that are in here in the hive that will be their, their home. And the reason I'll just let them sit here for a bit is just because they have been moved a couple hundred miles away and so I'm gonna just let them get acclimated to this area and the home that they've known and, and they can then tomorrow morning get out and start finding their the their pollen sources around here and so in a couple days i will be placing them in their new home and you might be able to see i'm not sure but we have been dumped on with a lot of snow and that's what you get in montana a couple days ago we were 80 degrees and shorts and the next day we had a pile of snow that was causing power outages everywhere <laughs> crazy weather i tell you if you haven't already watched my videos and, and read my posts about installing a package hive, please do that. Um, it's All of this is very new to me and I'm learning a lot and I'm just wanting to share my experience with you. So check those out. So here is the box that it came in. And I'm going to open up their entrance there and then tomorrow morning they'll be able to get out and fly and figure out their surroundings and as you can see we have our snow and I have it placed where I will put the hive in the long run um, they're right next to my other hives here and so here we go this is pretty exciting So I have placed the hive exactly where I had had the nuke box. And so I am going to be placing um, these five frames exactly in the same order, facing the same way in this hive. And the reason you do that is because that's how you do it. <laughs> that's um, just how they have it ordered in there and they um, it helps them out when you keep it the, the same way. So um, the way I have it set up in here is I'm going to have three frames on this side and two frames on, on this far side. And I took out two just so I don't want to squish any of them. I'm going to carefully remove them. And then I'll put in the empty frames carefully uh, after I have these five frames in. So this, this frame here on the far side, it's so beautiful in the sunlight. It has lots of honey, lots of beautiful colored pollen. It's orange and, and yellows, um, just beautiful. It just glistens in the sunlight. And, and on this side, there's some capped, capped honey on this side. So looking good with that one. That's you know, this morning I was eager to get going. It's the middle of May here uh, and about 10 o'clock it was still about 39 degrees. Right now it is, I think it's about 2 o'clock right now and it's finally reached about 52 degrees and it was really windy this morning and I kept praying please let the wind just calm down and, and the wind has calmed down a lot so I'm thankful for that because that wind is just cold. 
We had a big snowstorm last week and the snow has finally melted and <laughs> so this frame here you can see a lot of, in the empty places a lot of it is capped um, but in the empty spots I can see in the sunlight that it has lots of little little dots little eggs in the bottom there are a few uh, drone cells I can tell they're just um, a lot bumpier than the other capped brood uh, I'm gonna try to see the queen the last hive time I checked my other hive I was so excited to see the queen it's something I hadn't really been able to do it it just I don't know if it takes a, an experienced eye to be able to pick her out uh, but so hopefully I'm <laughs> gaining more experience just to be able to see her but sometimes I think that she's just kind of modest but it is cool to see her uh, she is just the life force of the hive she is <laughs> the most important part really because if there is no queen there is no no more bees In my other hives a couple weeks ago, there I had, didn't see when I was checking them, I didn't see any um, drone or much drone any. I don't remember seeing any in this one. I see quite a few other drone cells and quite a few, no, not mean not like a huge amount, but I definitely am picking out the drones um, in the midst of all of these. It's such a wonderful sound to hear, the sound of the buzzing. It's <sighs> It's not necessary to to see the queen. They I have seen that obviously there's cat brood, I've seen the eggs. So it's not necessary that I see the queen. It's just one of those things that it's fun to see her. That one out of 15,000 bees, or however many bees are in here. Um, that's a lot of bees, isn't it? But just to find that one is, is just so cool. <laughs> This frame here has a lot of pollen around the edges and a lot of capped brood. <sighs> this side has a lot of beautiful orange pollen in it. Pollen is what they use to feed the brood. This frame, this is my fourth frame right in the middle here. It has a lot of capped brood as well. Frame here. And the 
looking in the sunlight. This is the one that was on the far side, far outside side. There's on this side. There's uh, bees. Lots of bees. Actually, quite a few bees with pollen on their legs. <sighs> and but nothing. No pollen yet inside, and I don't see any eggs or anything. And this side. Let's see here. Has lots of glistening nectar honey that they're storing away. But I don't see any capped brood on this one. Well, that's the last frame. One of my frames that I had here um, is from, from the hive and that I'm putting in with it already had some capped honey in it and I'm going to be putting it in. But all these frames that I'm putting in with this hive are already drawn out and that'll really help the bees uh, get going because they don't have to spend the time in, in making and in, in getting those established. And so, you know, in Montana, and especially in our very central, Mon in central area, we are known as Central Montana in Lewistown. We're known as the Snow Hole. We are surrounded by a range of mountains, and we have about three months of summer, and that's about it. We can expect our last freeze, possibly, by M Memorial Day, and then <laughs> I know uh, a couple years ago I w was gone camping over Labor Day um, weekend, and it froze, froze my garden when we got back. So we have about three months all together. And so the bees don't have much time really in our area to do their work and get ready for the winter months. So they, so they gotta squeeze it all in. carefully together because I have three frames on this side and two of the frames that I'm providing for them on the other side and this frame too has has honey capped as well so I'm going to be putting it in, in here with the other one. Joel, this one has a lot of the propolis on it and it's preventing it from, it's preventing it from going down. So I'm going to scrape that off. Almost got it. Now, all right. There no, there are now five, uh, ten frames in there. Now I'm gonna encourage these bees that are in here. Get out. I'm going to be placing 
a pollen patty on this hive on the top, not quite in the center, off to the side. Protein from these patties are very necessary to the bees. Um, that's what helps with the jelly, <laughs> you know, the substance that the larvae swim around. Um, if there's lots of that jelly-like substance, it means they're getting lots of protein and that's really good. And so I'm going to place that there. I also have a little patty here. It's an essential oil patty that was created by the the company, the, the beekeepers that I got my nuke from. Just smell that. It smells delicious. Just take a big whiff. That is like, it smells heaven. Heavenly. <laughs> So this is something that will keep keep the hive happy, healthy. Um, and I'm gonna just put it on here, and then I'll just kind of keep an eye. I'm not gonna disturb this hive for a bit, a week or two. I'll let them get settled in, and then I will check back and then um, see if I need to put more of this. In, in with the hive and check on them and see how they're doing at that point. Or depending on how, how they're doing, I will be putting on the, the second deep on top. You always want to be on top of how full and cramped the bees are getting. They do not like it when they, they are cramped and when they're cramped, they will swarm and you don't want that. So, here is my installation of my nucleus colony. I'm gonna put on the top and here and then put on the lid. Uh, as you can see here, I placed in an entrance reducer. They do have a hole up here that they can get in and out of, uh, but the, the smaller the holes that they have, the less area they have to defend. They can defend their home a little bit easier with, with the smaller holes. And the smaller, or having entrance reducers like that also keeps rodents, mice, from being able to enter and, and cause a mess. And, and so that's just one thing to, to consider. I'm also on the far end here gonna be placing a brick underneath and that will just tilt it up a bit so that moisture will be draining off instead of inside because you don't want too much moisture or any moisture inside. So this was the installation of my nucleus colony. They look like a strong hive. The queen is laying and lots of cat brood that'll be hatching soon and so I'm pretty excited about this. I'm hoping that honey will be flowing and I'll be extracting honey this fall from this hive and so thank you for watching. This is my hive that I just, my nucleus colony hive, I also did give them some sugar water just to give them a boost as they're, they're starting out. And so that's just another thing. The entrance reducer I have, my other ones, they have a little slot that allows for my feeder to just fit in there and this one doesn't have it. Um, so I just set it out front here. I might end up getting another entrance reducer that has that slot for it so it fits in there nicely. That was fun, wasn't it? I thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to watch. And if you are an experienced beekeeper and you have any comments or suggestions, I would love to hear them. And if you're a new beekeeper or somebody that's thinking about getting into bees and you have any questions or comments, I would love to hear from you as well. L let's learn together. And, and I just know that I am just barely scratching the surface of what I have learned in, in my beekeeping journey so far. So if this video was helpful to you, if you learned anything, if it was valuable, please like it, comment, share it on your favorite social media platform, and subscribe to my channel. 
Also visit us and connect with us at heritageclubstables.com where you can sign up to receive exclusive updates and, and emails that have great content just like this and we really look forward to, to seeing you and connecting with you there. So thank you again for watching and we will see you in the next video.